So guys, we're back in the workshop. I can see you've been a little bit busy. You've built a, a nice new rig here consisting of one socket outlet and a consumer unit. So this seems a little bit overkill to me. So what's the thinking behind this? First of all, I'd like to thank Wilex who kindly came in and donated us a consumer unit with a built-in SPD and right. they gave us an A-type RCBO Ooh. and hence the video, Joe. Very nice. Okay, so A-type RCBO. Yes. So I get the feeling there's a little bit of controversy stirring here, guys. So what yep. we up to? So wait for it, folks. Yes, that's going to be the case. There'll be messages and, and yep. comments below. Start okay. flexing your fingers for the keyboard. Yeah. Yep. So at the point of recording this video, we're going with the following as our best practice. Okay. That's an A-type RCBO. Yeah. And for me, that means we're going to do 10 tests when testing it as an RCD. Okay. Whereas up until now, testing AC-type RCDs, we've got very used to doing five tests. We have. We? Okay, right. That's interesting. The thinking behind that is that the A-type RCBO in this case has the functions of both an AC RCD. Mm -hmm and an A-type RCD. Yep. So we're going to test it, first of all, five times set in our Mega MFT to AC. Okay. And we're gonna do the five tests for that. Yep. Then we're gonna alter it through to the A-type RCD, so RCBO in our case, and mm. we're gonna test it another five times, okay. making it 10 in total. Right. Then the issue we've got is we've only got one column in BS7671's model test paperwork yep. in order to record a result. Right. Of course, if you belong to an organisation such as uh, NIC, AIC, Alexa, NAPIT or Stroma, yes. then obviously their paperwork at the time of shooting this video does still contain the two columns. If it I, does. If I'm it right it does. Absolutely. And That's again, good. with 10 readings, you've got to yep. pick the right ones to record those up and we'll discuss that as we go through. I think the best thing we can do, Joe, is yep. bring the camera in. Let's set it up to do what I'm doing is 10 tests here at Tresham College until yep. further guidance is given to yep. us. And then we're going to pick the one reading that we're going to record. Let's go for it. So before we get into full controversy, Joe, let's just point out the sticker that I've inserted on the front of the consumer's unit. Mm -hmm. This has changed under the 18th edition and now requires the household owner or perhaps facility manager of a large business to actually press the test button on the RCD. How often now, Joe? So it says here that's to be checked uh, at the very most six monthly. So in other words, we don't want more than six months to pass by in between tests. Obviously, you can test this more regularly than that. And under previous editions, that of course was every three months as a maximum time limit on that. But now we're looking at every six months instead. Can you point out on the RCBO that we've installed in this consumer unit where that test button is? So on this particular RCBO, the Wilex brands, you can see that it's down at the bottom here underneath the switch. So that would be the button. We just press that and it will operate the device. And there is actually now a column in the paperwork provided by BS7671 to prove that you've pressed and done the functional test on the RCD yes, and requires you to tick that box. It's a very important part of our functional testing, isn't it? Which is actually what we're carrying out now on this RCD, uh, functional testing. Okay then, Joe. So we're going to test it 10 times. Yep. We're going to first of all set up our Mega MFT 1711 in order to test it as if it was the AC version of the RCBO. Yep. Can you do that for us? Absolutely. So here in this yellow section, we've got the RCD test settings. So first of all, I'm going to turn that around until it's at the half time setting. So what this is going to do, it's going to put half of the rated current uh, into the device and see if it trips, do we want it to trip on this occasion, Gary? No, we don't. We've got a 30 milliamp RCBO for additional protection for this socket outlet circuit. All loads have been removed before testing, but when we only pass 15 milliamps through it, we expect nothing to happen. Absolutely, and if something does happen, that could be an indication we're gonna have problems with nuisance tripping down the road. So we'll press the test button and see how it performs. And you can see there that it hasn't tripped. It's gone over uh, basically 2,000 milliseconds there, so obviously uh, it's not going to trip when only half the fault current is flowing. That's fantastic. Can you just repoint out to me where it says that we've actually set this Mega MFT for AC, Joe? Yep, so if you look very carefully down the bottom here, I don't know how clear it is on the screen, but you can see that we've got the AC uh, type symbol down there, so that shows that we're testing on AC type RCD settings. So that's our first of our 10 tests, Joe. Um, can you set it now to one times its rated value? So in this case, we're gonna be passing 30 milliamps through it, and you can see from the yellow arrow next to it that we've actually set that one to 30 milliamps. Would you like to point that out for us? Yep, so you can see there some more RCD settings here. We're at 30 milliamps, so we're now at one times the setting. So this is now going to apply a 30 milliamp fault to the RCBO and see if 
that operates within the time that we want it to. So what time do we want it to operate within, Gaz? This type of device, according to BS76M1, must go within 300 milliseconds as a maximum. Okay, so let's press the test button and see how quickly it trips. So you can see there it's tripped within 23.3 milliseconds. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna write these down on our whiteboard. So we're about to get a whole heap of readings from here, Gary. So what we're gonna do is record all of the readings just temporarily on the whiteboard, and then afterwards we'll discuss which ones of the readings we'll actually write up onto our certificates. Absolutely, you've only got one box now to record the readings. We're gonna have potentially eight readings to go from, so we're gonna to have to pick the correct one. Absolutely. We did that at zero degrees. Is it possible now you can change the angle to 180 for me? Yep, so we test on the second half of the cycle now. We press uh, that button there, and you can see that we've gone from zero degrees to 180 degrees. We're still on one times the fault current, so we're still testing at 30 milliamps. We're now testing the other half of the cycle. So We also need to reset the RCBO in order to carry out the test. One thing our students always miss, they come back to us going rushing back, saying I can't get it to do the second <laughs> test. So, okay, so we press again. Excellent, so let's uh, press the test button now. So you can see that we've now got 13.3 milliseconds at 180 degrees. There we go, so we've got that recorded on our whiteboard temporarily, and we'll see which one we're going to record into the test certificate in a moment. So again, Joe, that's well under the 300 milliseconds maximum. We're now going to reset the RCBO, and we're gonna to go to five times. We'll see what happens to the angle when we turn it up to five times. We're on 180 now, when we turn it up to the next one, to five times its rated value, we've dropped back to zero degrees. Very good, so we're on five times now, so now this is gonna pump five times the rated current in, so it's gonna do 150 milliamps, and it's gonna create that kind of fault, and hopefully this should trip again. So, uh, tripping time for this, guys, what should it fall within? For additional protection, the device must operate within a maximum of 40 milliseconds. Right then, so let's see what happens when we press the test button. There we go, so we've got 23.3 again, at our five times setting, 23.3 milliseconds. So all of these tests, Joe, that we're carrying out are proving the effectiveness of the RCD. Yep. Okay, we've still got to do one more test to make the five that we've done on the AC. So can you change the angle again for me? Absolutely, so again, pressing that button there just switches between zero and 180 degrees, so that's fine. We'll reset the RCD, and then we're going to press the test button one more time and see the reading that we get. And we're coming out with 13.3 milliseconds. So that's the five tests we've done as if the RCD was an AC RCD, Joe. Yep. And now we're going to repeat the five tests, but we've got to repeat it with the machine set as if it's looking at an A-type RCD. So can you do that for me next? Absolutely. So what we're going to do now is do a long press on the button here, and that's going to change the device type for the meter. So now that's gone from an AC type, you can see the icons moved over, and we've got the symbol for an A-type RCBO now. That means now we can go through the process of doing half, one and five times to complete five more tests and record those readings, and then we'll pick the reading that we're actually gonna record in our test paperwork, Joe. Fantastic. Is there any change now in the required times that this should trip within, Gaz? No, it's exactly the same. We've got 300 milliseconds as a maximum at one times, and 40 milliseconds a maximum of five times. Fantastic, so reset the RCBO, and you can see there, that we're now at half times the setting, we're on an A-type RCD, and now we can carry out the test. So again, we wouldn't expect this to trip, so let's do the test. There we go, so it hasn't tripped, so that's good, that's what we want. We'll now go to one times, and we'll carry out the test now and see if it operates with the A-type RCBO settings. There we go. So we come up at the same time again, 23.3 milliseconds. We'll reset the device. Change the angle. We'll go to 180 degrees and we'll test again. And we've tripped in 13.4 milliseconds this time, 13.4. So we'll just write those two times up onto the whiteboard. So we've got two more to do. We need to turn it up to five times. So we're gonna be passing 150 milliamps again through our 30 milliamp RCDs with a maximum disconnection time of 40 milliseconds. We're back to zero degrees. Okay, so we'll carry out the first test again, five times and 23.3 milliseconds. This RCBO is nothing if not consistent. 
23.3 milliseconds. And then once more change the angle. Okay, so reset the RCD, reset the angle and test away. 13.5 milliseconds. Okay, Joe, so we've tested our A-type RCBO 10 times, five as if it was an ACRCD, part mm -hmm. of the function of an A-type RCD. And then obviously we've tested it five times on the A setting for the Mega MFT as well. Yeah. We've now got to make a decision which of the readings we're going to record when we only have one box in our BS7671 paperwork. Okay. Let's have a look at the whiteboard and we'll see which numbers to write down. So we've got some very consistent readings on that board, Joe. Hence yeah. the extra controversy, no doubt, yeah. in the Why comments. Why bother below. doing it if the readings are the same? <laughs> we understand that. Yeah. So we're trying to prove the effectiveness of this RCD, which I think we've done, yeah. and we're happy with the current standard practice at Tresham College to do that test yeah. actually 10 times. We've got eight readings recorded on the whiteboard. However, only one of those is gonna transfer through to the paperwork. Which yeah. one are we gonna choose, Joe? So again, with the new uh, sample documentation that we find in the 18th edition of the regs, you'll find uh, that there is only one column for recording RCD operating times. So all the official guidance that we received so far indicates that we just record whatever the highest value is. So whether that is in the uh, one time setting, the five time setting, whether it's in the AC setting or the A setting, you pick the highest time, the longest time. So we've had a bit of luck there because we've got a lot of 23.3s yep. and that's what we would record in the RCD column of our test paper. Is that true, Absolutely, yeah, that would be the one. However, we've also got to take into account the fact that much of the documentation produced by organisations such as NIC, EIC and Alexa, NAPIT and Stroma actually contain two columns. And so where we contain the two columns, one for the one time setting and one for the five time setting, We've then got to think about recording the highest time for each of those settings, whether it's one times or five times. So, so then, Joe, we're nearly at the end of this controversial video on testing A-type RCDs, where we've yep. set how many tests that we're going to suggest? We've set up 10 tests that we'd like to see carried out, and when we deliver this material to our learners, that will be the standard that they'll be working to. And this is on the back of conversations with field engineers mm -hmm. and actually the manufacturers of the test instruments that we haven't quite got the bigger picture yet. So yep. until we have clarity in industry yep. at Tresham College, we're sticking with the 10 tests, yep. five of the AC setting and yep. five at the A type setting. Yeah, we think that's important because the regulations require that we prove the effectiveness of our RCD protective devices. And we think that that is the best way yeah. of proving the effectiveness of an A type RCD. Brilliant, I think that's a lovely way to end it, Joe, apart from we need our phrase. Let's so listen to it. it. We, we hope this controversial, controversial video has been, been some help. help.